Hey guys, what's up? My name is Zach, and today I'll be doing an election prediction video between uh, Senator Kamala Harris of the state of California uh, versus President Donald Trump in a hypothetical 2020 uh, presidential election. Um, so let's just run down um, the safe states and likely the safe states for the Republicans and safe states for the Democrats. Um, for Kamala Harris, I don't think a lot is going to be different um, compared to just a generic Democrat. Um, she is minority, uh, African American, and she is a woman, so that is going to have an effect on the electorate in general. Um, however, I don't believe that she is the strongest candidate uh, for the Democrats to nominate. Uh, many people are saying that she is um, one of the strongest candidates and ha have her right up there with Bernie Sanders, but I disagree with this, and I'll explain why I disagree with this um, throughout the video. Um, okay, so let's just go west from east, just like I would um, ordinarily. I'll make sure I have the... Yep. Oh, yeah. There you go. Um, hopefully that's centered. Um, if it isn't, then whatever. Um, so yeah, west uh, west to east. Let's start from Nevada. Um, so Nevada, as I've covered in my past election prediction videos, has been making a trend. Um, well, not a trend. Um, well, maybe a trend like um, since 2016 um, towards Donald Trump, which is... Um, a big contrast compared to the rest of the nation, but regardless, it does exist. However, Harris is uh, from the region. She's not. She's not from Nevada, but she is from the region. I think that regionalism does play a factor um, here when you're from the American South Southwest. Um, but with that said, um, I don't think that she could appeal very well to the voters here, especially um, to the voters that um, are going to vote Trump or plan on voting Trump currently. Um, that's mostly because I do see her as a very Hillary Clinton-type candidate. The, whether it's the way she talks, the way she carries herself, I see her to be very Hillary Clinton-like. Um, and I'll cover that more at the end of the video or throughout the video, um, but that's just my opinion. And I know that she's a minority, but she's African-American. She's not Latina or Latina. And in order to win Nevada, um, you have to bring over Latina voters. Um, you can't just be any minority in order to bring out... Um, Hispanic voters, you have to be that specific minority. So with that said, I'm going to give this currently a very slight lean to Kamala Harris. Not a likely, um, as it probably should be, um, for the Democrats, a lean, which is, um, which is an exception to this candidate, because like I said, I don't think that she's the best candidate for the Democrats to run. But now going down to New Mexico, um, I do believe that Kamala Harris will win here, but whether it is solid or likely, I'm not too sure. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say likely. Um, I'm gonna say likely just based on Donald Trump's approval in this state, which is low, but um, should be lower based on a state that's been solid Democrat in the past, um, and based on the swing I went to Hillary Clinton in 2016, which I think is gonna be comparable to Harris if she is the Democratic candidate. Texas, obviously, likely, um, should be solid, but um, just for the sake of demographic changes, I'm going to say likely. Um, you know, what? I'm going to say solid. I'm going to say solid in the, uh, uh, in the case of Kamala Harris, just because I don't think that there's a uh, snowball's chance in hell that Kamala Harris can win the state of Texas in, 26, in, 26, in 2020. Um, as for Arizona, I'll come back to that, I'll come back to that later. Um, Colorado, um, same call as New Mexico. I'd say it's likely to go in Senator Harris's column. Um, Georgia, I'm going to say likely just because of the African-American factor, uh, which I think could play a role, but it's it's very unlikely for Georgia to go into Harris's column, which is why I'm saying it likely to go to Trump, uh, just because I can't ignore demographic trends when doing an election prediction. Uh, Virginia, I'd say likely. That should be solid. In fact... I think I'm going to make it solid. Yeah, solid. Um, Hillary Clinton did win the state in 2016, um, and given the shift blue um, in Virginia as well as around the country that we've been seeing, along with Kamala Harris's African-American factor, Donald Trump's little approval rating in the state, I'd say it's solid, at least currently. That could change the next time I do a Sayers versus Trump prediction, but let's just keep that as is. Minnesota, likely. Um, yeah, I'd say I'd say that's likely um, to go into Harris's column, given that Hillary Clinton won it, and given um, the African American appeal she has. Um, Michigan, I'd say it's likely as well. 
I would not say it'd be lean. I think the state would go in the Democratic column for a candidate like Harris no matter what. Well, no matter what, but for the sake of this prediction, I think it'd go in the Democrats' column. It's just a matter of whether it's lean or likely. I'd say it's going to be likely. Trump's approval in the state is still dismally poor, and Harris's um, and Harris is a candidate that I think sh should be able to win Michigan. It, yeah. As for Wisconsin, I think I'd call it as a lean. Um, I don't think that Harris has good appeal in the state overall to bring over uh, white working class voters, which is a big factor to win in this state. Um, the way Trump can. Um, like I said, I think she's a Hillary Clinton type candidate, and a Hillary Clinton type candidate um, is going to find it very hard to win in Wisconsin. However, with that said, there is a Democratic shift in Wisconsin overall, as we're seeing with 2018 election polls and with polls in the state in general. Along with the African American factor, I can see Kamala Harris taking the state. However, I think it will be, <clears throat> I think it will be close. Iowa, obviously likely, if not solid. Um, Trump has a very solid hold in the state. This is one of the very few um, swing states that he has a very solid hold on, and the one state that he continues to perform very well in. Um, I think that he could take Iowa um, in a Harris versus Trump election pretty easily. Um, but regardless, it's still a swing state, and it swung, with that said, swung very far um, to either ends of the, of the spectrum. Very far. So with that unpredictability in mind, I'm going to call it as a likely. Um... As for Nebraska's second, I'm going to say lean Trump. Um, this district is Omaha, essentially, and with a, a single city, it's kind of hard to say um, whether it'll definitively swing in a certain direction. I'm not even too sure um, how much Donald Trump won this district by, just because uh, most predictions I've seen don't even show it since it's a single, since it's a single district. Um, but regardless, I'm going to call it as a lean. Ohio... Um, now I'm going to go back to Ohio. Pennsylvania, I'd call as likely, um, just given the Democratic shift in the state in general, um, and given the fact that a Democrat should be able to win here no matter what, unless it's a truly awful candidate. And Harris, I don't think it's a truly awful candidate, I just don't think she's one of the best, as you can see by this map already. Um, so with that said, um, Pennsylvania, um, we're good likely to Harris, and that gives Harris the technical victory in this technical election scenario with 272 electoral votes, but we're not done yet. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, New Hampshire, I call it as likely. Uh, we're seeing a shift um, de towards the Democratic side and away from Trump overall in this state, especially given, um, um, especially given the general, um, the 2016 election and the fact that Hillary Clinton did win the state by a very narrow margin. Um, I can see the state going pretty likely to Harris's column. Actually, I know I keep double um, going over states twice, but. Um, I would call it as I would call it as lean, just because Harris is West Coast and probably will not have um, as good appeal in the state as a Democrat would if they're not from the West Coast. Um, so I would call it as a lean to Harris. Um, main second district, I would say um, likely likely Trump. Um, it, for the same reason, that I would call New Hampshire j just as a lean for Harris um, and main second. Um, as likely. As likely, yeah. Um, okay. North Carolina is one state that I think Kamala Harris can do well in compared to others, um, and for that reason I'd call it as a lean, uh, just because of the African-American appeal that I think she can have in this state, but that I don't think would be able to flip it. I'd call it as a lean to Trump, not a likely to Trump, which is what I would call it with, with if I disregard the African-American appeal. Um, in Ohio, I'd call the state in the Trump column, but I don't know whether it'd be a lean or likely. I'd call it as a, I'd call it as a lean, just because this is a swing state, and, um, I don't think it would be definitively in Trump's column. I think that the only way to make this state likely is if it's a, if it's just a bad candidate in general on the Democratic side, which, like I said, I don't think Harris is a bad candidate, I just don't think she's one of the best. Um, okay. I don't know why I left Arizona for last. This this is a state that I think would go um, likely for Trump, even given the, the, the very strong trend Democrat we're seeing. Uh, I don't think that this state will go Harris. And I know I cited um, Southwestern Appeal uh, to start off the video, but Arizona is kind of an anomaly when, you, when you're thinking about that. It kind of resists um, Southwestern Appeal in general. It sets itself apart from states like California and Nevada. 
Um, that's that's why it's a Republican state in general, I think, or one of the reasons why. Um, so I'd call it as likely to Trump. As for Florida, I would call the state as a lean to Harris. I, but I think it's just barely. Um, it's just barely a lean. Um, and I think that's mostly just because of her... Um, for minority appeal, her African American appeal, and the trend Democrat were seeing in the state overall as a result of the um, the gun rights movement, which, like I said in my election and prediction video, I think is a much more bigger deal than people are thinking of it, are thinking it to be even now. Um, for that reason, I called the state as a lean, and this is my election prediction video. Overall, I think that Harris would not be a good candidate uh, for the Democrats in 2020, despite numerous um, rankings showing her towards the top. I don't think it'd be smart to nominate her as the as the candidate. And many people will disagree with that just because she's a minority, but just because you're a minority doesn't mean you, um, you're you going to do better than others. I mean, well, it obviously plays a factor, as I explained in my last video, but you have to have uh, the personality type as well to go along with it. Um, and I don't think that Harris has that personality type, which is why um, I would say that she would win, win most of these states pretty narrowly. I think that there is a pretty decent chance that Trump could win against Harris in 2020 if his approval goes up even a little bit. Um, and I know that I'm, I'm giving Harris a 307 to 231 margin against Trump, but you have to look at it by a state-by-state -state basis. I mean, Florida is very narrow, Wisconsin very narrow, Nevada is very narrow, and some states like New Mexico that should be solid isn't, M Minnesota should be solid is not. So yeah, overall I think that Harris would not be the best candidate to go against Trump. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I do plan to crank out a, a lot more election prediction videos between candidates who I think are likely to be to be making a, a bid uh, for the nomination in 2020, and maybe even um, a House of Representatives uh, prediction video, which I do want to do. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you have any comments or thoughts, um, please feel free to leave them down below. Thanks.